Hey friends, so today is going to be an incredible day. Today, I'm heading to pick up my buddy Jack and then I'm heading to see Jeff, the owner of Maine Fly Fishing Company, and I'm gonna get myself my very first fly rod. And uh, of course, it's gotta be handmade right here in Maine. So let's hit the road and let's check it out. I went off on a quest right after high school to prove, you know, I can be successful at all this crap. I don't need to go to the Ivy League schools. I'm gonna go make this work. And fast forward 10 years, it's like, let me take the next big step, took this next big job. And, you know, three years later, solved their problems and I just, I just didn't wanna go anymore. Next thing you know, we're having a baby. Well, first ultrasound and there's the heartbeat. There's the other one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> What other one? It was a big one for me. Not long after that, uh, my dad, he wasn't in good shape. And, and we knew his ability to travel was really on its way out. Let's take him back to his homage and, and, and take him on this incredible trip. And so we did all that and we came home and you know dropped him off and flew into Chicago, out of Chicago and, and hand delivered him and dropped him off. And something in the gut, that's, that's the last trip that man's gonna take. Um, and not too many months later he passed. Yeah. And so there's a tremendous sense of pride, but also a sense of the reality of how I felt cheated out of my dad and his experiences and so much of that that I had missed. And so as the only son of the family, I flew out to Chicago to sort his affairs. And I finally got to go in the basement and touch all these things I wasn't allowed to touch. Don't touch my fly rods. This is, you can't touch that. No, you don't touch it. Turn that loose, turn that loose. And so I was like, well, screw it. I'm going through all this stuff. And I found the waders and the flies and bags of fly rods. And it was just the weirdest moment for me. And I'd never experienced anything like it. But all I wanted to do was take this stuff out, try it. What is this? What is this secret world he had that he was so obsessed about that as a young kid, I refused to be part of. And um, on my long drive back from Chicago to Maine, um, I took his tools, I sat in the back of the property, built a small little barn, took a month just to kind of collect myself. Not too long after that, Toby, who was on our team, him and I were sitting in Riverside and we were just chatting after a little fishing one day and started looking at a rod and we're like, I think I can build this. And I'm like, I think I can build it better. Who does this in Maine? Nobody. I think Beans does. I'll go find out. Beans are going to build anything. Who's doing this in New England? Where's this craft go? One of the things my father was always proud about, you know, in Maine and the Northeast was was the craftsmanship and the, the small little furniture stops and the and the, the building the chairs and all these things and and it was always a deep rooted passion of mine. And so it was a leap of faith. To hear you say this stuff, and again, like I guess it brings me full circle. Like you're sitting here telling me like your complicated history with your father and going down and you know, seeing this fly rod and just that whole, what is this secret world? And again, like I grew up with some amazing outdoorsmen. Some of my first memories as a kid are just literally looking up and seeing that fresh green leaf, you know, with the, the sun coming through and collecting the sap from the trees. To give you a little history, I grew up without running water electricity. And like we lived in Amherst, Aurora area, just, it was awesome. So we grew up fishing, but this rod, was something that this man, anytime we'd visit him, was always up on his wall, and it was always sitting next to his crossbow. And we'd go out fishing, but I'd never seen him fly fish, ever. And it was something that I always, always looked at and admired, and it's been in my office for years. And the fly fishing world has always just seemed so beautiful and poetic. As a filmmaker, I just see this as just a work of art and the whole form behind it, and I wanna get involved. And to hear you come from the background of, well, this wasn't what I was. But for me, being like, well, I kind of feel imposter syndrome. I am an avid outdoorsman. I love the outdoors, but I haven't fished for years and I want to get back into it. And again, corporate fly fishing is, well, no, if you don't have all of this stuff, like don't, don't, 
don't fly fish with us. So to be able to do it this way and to hear your passion and your drive for Maine history, and that's what I wanna do. I wanna confidently take my kids out fishing, my four kids, building my career in the film industry around my family, the structure of my home. Because if my family is in order and my kids are a part of it, nothing else matters. So if I can live my passion and be the best version of me that I can be, just like you're doing, and we pass that to our kids, where, hey, if you wanna pick up a camera, great. If not, maybe I can set you up on some other journey, but whatever that passion is, I'm gonna fuel it a million percent. So this is the rod that I got tired of staring at in my office as my son is asking me about it. And I'm feeling like, uh, I'm gonna be real, you know, that quiet man shame of like, you know what? I have no idea how to fly fish, son. And you know, my daughters are interested too. And it's just this relic in a memory. So to be able to come here and to get something custom built that I can build these memories with, with my kids and to bring people along means the world to me. It means the absolute world to me, man. All right, so this is where you do all your final touches, which is awesome. Um, but I've got to be real with you. I'm pretty anxious to see my reel and to figure out how to use it. Is there any chance there's a spot nearby where we could yeah, yeah, take it from here? here. Uh, let's go fishing. All right, let's do it. Cool. Super exciting. But uh, typically it uh, just needs a little tap, but I'm uh, fatter than I was the last time I slid under this truck. I catch something, we'll try. That's opens right up. Pretty. Pretty. So many of the waterways are mixed with, 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 with the natives, uh, some of the, the stock and some of the bigger. And so for that, you know, that standard nine foot five weight rod is really your go-to. Uh, something that will be versatile in, in, in a number of situations. Uh, if the fishes are too small, you're just setting them easier with net. With this one, the cheeky preload, you've got a net, get some waders and flies, you're in the game. Sweet. Yeah. All right, so the main cameras are died, but uh, it has been an awesome day. We're heading back to the truck to get to my truck. And then Jack so kindly said he would push my truck all the way to Belfast <laughs> if I don't mind steering at 40 miles an hour. What a guy. So uh, yeah, we gotta get going, but it, it's been a good day. Mm -hmm.